Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to lecture 29 of SBR which is IFRS 7 financial instruments disclosure this is a very small standard okay but this is uh, linked to your IFRS 9 which is going to be my next lecture here we are already focusing on the main disclosure regarding financial instruments we have already finished one standard which is linked to financial instruments that is IS 32 which was the classification right of financial assets and liabilities this is regarding disclosure and IFRS 9 which will be the next lecture the main standard now in he here you need to disclose about the significance of financial instruments okay you have to disclose the income expense gain and lodger with separate disclosure from each class of financial instrument next you have to give information about the nature and the extent of the risk that arises from the financial instrument okay regarding nature and extent there are two types of risk one is you have to give qualitative disclosure the other one is quantitative under qualitative risk exposure from each type of financial instrument management's objectives and policies in managing those risk changes from prior period for quantitative summary of quantitative data about exposure to each risk disclosure about the credit risk liquidity risk and market risk and finally concentrations of the risk now that's it that's it IFRS 7 is very small standard but before we summarize IFRS 7 we have one question and then we are done why do you think there are three separate standards only dealing with financial instruments let me ask you this question before i move on to the question the reason is because financial instrument is a very complex product therefore it is often difficult for the users to understand how it can affect how risky it is it's very risky it's very complex so easily prepares can manipulate it because something which is very difficult users do not usually want to understand it they do not take so much of time to go through the whole picture right because it's very difficult something which is very easy it's harder to manipulate because everyone understands but something which is very complex like financial instrument is very difficult to understand very complex not everyone has the understanding and the knowledge of it therefore it's very easy to manipulate that's why they are very strict on the standard that's why there are three separate standards just to deal with financial instruments there are no other standard like this where there are three separate for each item there is only one standard revenue just has ifrs 15 leases just has ifrs 16 and non-current asset ifrs 16 one standard for one element except for the financial instrument it has three separate standard is 32 IFRS 7 which is this one and the next one IFRS 9 they are very strict that's why the disclosure of financial instrument is a separate standard itself rather than putting it under IFRS 9 in one standard why is it so to emphasize the importance of disclosure that you have to disclose is very important to disclose financial instruments because it's very risky very complex very difficult to understand that's why so now with this understanding let us do one question before we summarize IFRS 7 Test your understanding 23 leaser okay this is the only question in IFRS 7 so this is regarding leaser who is a debt issuer okay whose business is in the securitization of a portfolio of underlying investments and financing they are purchasing through the issuing of listed limited recourse debt so they're issuing debt okay now the repayment of that debt is dependent upon the performance of the underlying investment again a very risky thing okay that means debt holders are the ones who bear the ultimate risks and rewards of owning this investment now given the debt specific nature the risk profile of individual of debt may differ some might be risky some might be less risky some might be more debt risky leaser does not consider its debt holders as being among the primary users of the financial statement he does not even consider them okay therefore does not even wish to provide disclosure of the debt holders exposure and risk in the financial statement they feel it is only the shareholder who are the primary users 
now what do you need to do is discuss with the directors we that know for the information regarding how should be disclosing the financial statement because it will be excessive do you think it's excessive or you have to disclose now you have the understanding of rfrs 7 to help you with this how do you answer this question the full answer is there okay in your textbook i'm not reading it you can take on your own leisure time and read it but i'm giving you the main points okay so first first paragraph you can talk about the shareholder you can talk about the stakeholders sorry or the users of the financial statement okay lizard's perception that debt holders are not the primary is too narrow okay they are limiting so they are only limiting their stakeholders to the shareholder they only fill the primary user are the shareholders not debt holders so first paragraph could be regarding on that coming to the second paragraph second paragraph they have told they have referred the answer to is1 see whenever the question comes disclose disclose disclosure or presentation it is is1 that you have to refer this is how is1 is tested through this question i am showing you how two standards could be tested one is ifrs 7 that we know because disclosure of financial instruments the other one is is1 the general generally disclose which is is1 okay so whenever they say about excessive disclosure should you disclose or not remember keep in your head it is is1 that they are pointing this is how is1 is tested they will not ask questions see is1 is not a technical question technical standard like how revenue is tested leases is tested uh, asset is tested tangible intangible as assets are tested so we specifically know for this this is the standard but how do we know for this is1 is there it is by the word disclosure the 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 importance of information these are the keywords that says you that is1 is the standard that is being tested okay so now you can read the answer there okay nicely they have given you so now what does is1 say what is the main theme they say is to give information okay provide information okay is1 gives information about what three things financial performance financial position okay this is performance this is position that is statement of financial position income statement and cash flow the role of the financial statement is to give information about those three things right and to whom to the users so that they can make an economic decision the standard also tells you that if you omit or misstate the item that a material okay their material if they could affect the decision making of the user so now bring this to the third paragraph that is ifrs 7 now talk about ifrs 7 ifrs 7 is more specific it is only for financial instrument that they are asking for disclosure is1 is more general so first talk about general then come to the specific okay so what does ifrs 7 say just now we went through the previous slide to disclose what See how can this affect your IS1? It affects these two things. Significantly, it affects the financial position and performance. Why? Financial instruments are very risky. So you have to disclose it. Right? Because financial instruments are so significant, they can significantly influence the financial position and performance. So IFRS 7 says these two things you have to disclose. Number one, exposure to risk. It's mandatory, by the way, not voluntary, okay? Because IFRS 7 is there. If IFRS 7 was not there, we could say, okay, voluntarily you disclose. Then it would be excessive. Now it is not excessive. Voluntary to disc, sorry, exposure to risk and how they arise. Next point that you have to disclose is what? Objectives, policies, and procedure for managing the risk and the methods used to measure that risk processes i'm writing the short okay i'm writing it in short form
for managing the risk okay that means risk attached to that debt should be disclosed finally you have to conclude that the risks attached obviously debt are very risky you have to disclose it risk attached to the debt should be disclosed is important for the users should be look at the word not maybe or could be should be disclosed very strong word so now let's summarize ivrs 7 so in ifrs 7 we went through the disclosure requirement number one significance of financial instrument number two nature and extent of risk number three quantitative and qualitative issues okay this is a very small area yet very significant thank you for watching and see you in the next major standard which i know many of you have uh, lots of questions from there it's a very challenging standard on its own but i'm sure after the video you will not find ifrs 9 any more challenging in fact it's one of the easier standard right if you know some steps how to practice and how to learn it which i'll be showing you in the next video so thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel and take care